Hey y'all, how you doing today? Dana here and have I got a treat for you. And it's gonna be Mama Holt's Cabbage Rolls. Have y'all ever had cabbage rolls? Well, these are Mama Holt's Cabbage Rolls, the recipe she gave me a long, long time ago. And I'm about to show you how to make them. They're easy, you throw them in the crock pot and you, they cook all day and then you serve them with cornbread that night. It's a really good meal. Uh, and it's, you'll find the recipes for Mama Holt's Cabbage Rolls in Happiness is Homemade, y'all. And my book is available on Amazon. It'll come right to your house. It's on sale right now. I'll include the link up above. But I wanna tell y'all, Mama Holt was a really special influence in my life. Uh, this right here, this apron, if you can see my apron, it represents her and Simon, her husband. Uh, her first husband had died earlier in her life, and when she remarried, she married Simon, and Simon used to always wear overalls. So, David's mother got Mama Holt's shirt and Simon's overalls and made me an apron out of them. Is that not the sweetest thing? David's mother can make anything she sets her mind to, but she made this for me uh, to pay homage to them. And I'm gonna tell you that I pay homage to them in my cookbook. I have some great stories about them, but I wanna show you Mama Holt. Here she is right here. She had a spark for life that just would not, she would not let go of, and I'm thankful for it. And the good Lord was with her every step of the way, right by her side. And there's some stories of, of her faith in here and stories of Rick Rack, which if y'all know what Rick Rack is, it's that zigzaggy stuff that you used to put on stuff all the time when you were sewing. Just different stories about Mama Holt. And let me show you a picture of her and Simon. Uh, hang on, I gotta turn the page. And here's a picture of, of her and Simon right here in my cookbook. Aren't they just the sweetest? I know it, and that Simon, now he was a character too, they were both characters, but I know I've told you before, but Mama Holt raised a lot of kids, uh, and so she was a good cook and she knew how to feed them, and one thing she would always feed them is cabbage rolls. Now, hang on, let me just tell you what you're going to need to make these cabbage rolls, y'all, they're good. Uh, and they're also, if you're doing low carb stuff, this is a low carb meal that you can eat. If you don't serve it with cornbread, you've got low carb here. So I tell you what you need, you're gonna need a can of sauerkraut. You're gonna need some ground meat, okay? And you're gonna need a, a cabbage, a bit of cabbage, some salt and pepper, and you're gonna need some diced tomatoes or whatever kind of tomatoes you wanna use. Today, I'm gonna use, instead of one large can, I'm gonna use diced tomatoes and I'm also gonna use some tomatoes that my mother and I put up uh, out of the garden. So that's what I'm using today, it'll be really good. To get this party started, we're gonna need some boiling water and I'll show you what we need that for in a minute and you're gonna need your crock pot. So I've got my crock pot getting warm the first thing we're gonna do is just simply open the sauerkraut and pour it in there. And how easy is this? And y'all know you can do it in the crock pot or you can do it on the stove, but I'm gonna do mine in the crock pot. Cause, oh, and while I'm sitting here doing this, y'all wake up Facebook for me, send, send me some hearts, okay? So we can wake up Facebook. Cause you know, Facebook is kind of like me sometimes before I have coffee in my system. <laughs> a little sluggish so y'all share this and um anyway put some hearts and likes and all that on there all right y'all we're just gonna spread this out over the bottom of my crock pot and that's it okay that's it you spread it out over the bottom and y'all that sauerkraut's gonna give it a really really good taste and you're gonna also need some toothpicks which i have right here uh, you're gonna have to, you know, help the cabbage rolls stay together. So, let me pull the salt and pepper up here and I'm gonna just get started and showing y'all how we do this. I've got my meat right here and I'll put it over here where I can reach it a little bit better. It's getting crowded in here, trying to make sure you can see it. All right, I got my cabbage here. And I, I went and looked for one that I thought looked good and didn't look like it had a lot of problems with it. But you know, the first two or three leaves you're not gonna use. So what we're gonna do is just pull these off 
and get them, put them to the side out of the way. And what we want to do is wrap this meat up in here. Okay, this one doesn't look too beat up. I think I'm going to take off the two leaves. But y'all, I was real picky when I was picking out this cabbage. Oh, I threw it in the water anyway. When I was picking out this cabbage because I wanted, because I knew I was going to use it in this recipe. And see, you won't use all the cabbage. So what you'll end up doing. Now see, y'all, this looks real good and there's no bad spots. Let me get that out. You're going to need some tongs. All right, now I'm going to just take a few out and show you how I do it. And you just lay them in that water and you let it get soft enough so you can use it to wrap up. Now see, this one's tearing. See, everything's not going to be perfect when you do this. But anyway, this one is tearing, so let me go ahead and get it off. Oops, oops, oops. Pull that one off. All right. Okay, here we go for the next one. Come on, you pull off all at once. I'm going to do it a little different this time and cut the bottom of the leaf. There we go. I cut the bottom of the leaf, and we're going to go out the other way. Through the side. There we go. Come on, you. <laughs> Y'all wish me luck on this. And if it splits a little, it's okay. You know, the world's not going to end if it splits a little. We'll just roll it back together. We cooks. We know tricks, don't we? Now, have y'all ever made these cabbage rolls? And if you have, tell me how you do it and all that type of stuff. Oh, Lordy, come on now. It's fighting me tooth and nail. <laughs> okay, I finally got one off, and it's a little ragtag, but we're going to go ahead and throw it in here and let it get soft. And as it is, I'm just going to pull some more off. And not worry about it too much. I hope y'all are doing okay. I'm doing good. Uh, we got hay on the ground, so we got I got some hay men I got to feed, some farmers. We're getting the hay in. Well, we're trying to get it in. It rained on it, and I don't know if y'all know, it's not a good thing when it rains on your hay that you cut. So we're waiting for um, it to dry up or fluffed it and all that type of stuff. So we're waiting on that. But anyway, I'm going to pull a few of these off and then show you how to do one or two of these rolls, and then I will show you what it looks like when I get ready to move on to the next step. <laughs> help me, help me, this cabbage is not working. <laughs> Come on, you. Tell you what, I'll show this cabbage who's the boss. Right now it's giving me difficulty. Okay, I've got this one, and I'm gonna show you about this. You gotta get your cabbage where it is um, just soft. And then we're gonna dry it off a little bit, okay? Now, some people cut the core off right here. And you can do that if you want to, but my mother-in-law loves that part. So we're not cutting it off because she's gonna be eating this. And, and it's gonna cook all day in here and it'll be real tender by the time we get there. So anyway, here we go. We're going to get our meat, and we're going to get a good spoonful here. And I'm going to say this is about a fourth of a cup. And put it in there, and then we're going to salt and pepper it. Salt and pepper. And then we're going to all pull it together like this and tuck it in and then just roll it up. And when you get through rolling it, now you could just set it in there like this, but when you get through rolling it, we would always, Mama Hope said, you stick a toothpick in it like this and you stick it in your crock pot. And that's what you do. Now let me get another one of these cabbage pieces in there. So that's how we do it. That's how we get it started. And this is a very tight head of cabbage. It's tight, man. All right, here we go. Oh, this one's doing a little better. I tell y'all, <laughs> I don't just let people watching me do this. <laughs> I just pull it off of there in case a Ross a rock, you know. 
whatever will be, will be with that cabbage. But anyway, I'll pull, do the best I can and get this going. And you don't have to leave it in your boiling water for long. And y'all, normally I would have this over, um, I'll do it on the stove, but um, cause, because there's not enough room up under that stove hood, I did it like this. All right, this is all good and limp. And even though it looks like it's falling apart, we're gonna, we can make some magic with this. Put about a fourth of a cup in there. There we go. Maybe a little bit more. And then salt and pepper. Now y'all have to remember sauerkraut's got salt in it too. Then you're just gonna roll, pull it in and roll it over and make a beautiful little roll that we are gonna enjoy later. Stick a toothpick in it. It's gonna cook all day and we will have quite a treat when it's time to eat later. We will have quite, quite, quite a treat. Let me throw that one in there and get it going. Just let it get a little limp. And that's not hard at all, y'all. It's just water. It's just boiling water. All right, these, are, like I said, are being persnickety coming off, but y'all don't let that bother you. Good Lord, there's a lot more things to worry about than what your cabbage is doing, but it is what it is. Come on, you. There we go. So anyway, we're just going to fill this up. Now, you know, when I would call Mama Holt when I was a young Mary, you know, she lived right next to me, and... She could really cook food that my kids liked because, you know, I told you she raised a bunch of kids. And I think she had 11, had 12 and raised 13, something like that. Uh, anyway, here's the meat going in. Salt and pepper. There you go. Whoops, we didn't tuck that in, did we? Let's tuck in the sides and roll it up. And if you get one that's showing a little through like that, just pull you another piece of cabbage and put over there on top of it. I'm going to use this piece right here and get it good and limp. There we go. Just put it on like that. This is very forgiving. Okay, hold it together and put it on the sauerkraut. All right. I'll be back shortly and show you, after I get all these wrapped, and show you what we're going to do next. All right, here we are. I'm going to show you a few more. I've got some good looking ones pulled off again. And remember, we put about a fourth a cup in there. That might be a little more than a fourth. And we salt it just a smidge and then a little pepper from up top. Right, then we put it in there and we fold them in like this. Roll it over and keep folding it in. Stick a toothpick in it and put it right in the crock pot on top of that sauerkraut. So I got a few more, we're just gonna do that. I just went ahead and turned that camera off and pulled some more off of the, uh, off of the cabbage a few more in there and like I said this is a really good meal and my my kids loved this when they were growing up because they knew Mama Holt it was her recipe my kids would eat just about anything she cooked um, so you know if you've got somebody that you know that used to make a whole cook for a whole lot of people get their recipes those people know what to do but anyway let me fold the back up and then fold these in and roll it over Go ahead and stick a toothpick in it. This thing's going in. Yes, sir. Ready? It's going to be good. And y'all, um, if you've got people that you love and, you know, they might not be with you anymore, but you can remember them through the recipes. Uh, I like to do that. Remember people through recipes. I think it's a good way to remember them. And I collect them. You know, I do. Let me collect these recipes. Then I put them in books. So all these recipes that you're seeing from uh, my family are tried and true recipes and we've been eating them down here in the Alabama, down here in the South for generations. So let me tell you something, y'all get my book, Happiness is Homemade, y'all, and it'll, if you wanna eat like true Southerners, you can do it. 
tried and true recipes. Do I need any more? I've just got a little bit more meat. Let me throw that one in. No, that one doesn't look good. All right, y'all want to see me pull another one off. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that's, I, that's where I got yeah, yeah from, too. Mama hope you say that all the time. She'd say yeah, yeah when something was good. So, anyway, and that Simon, I got to tell y'all about Simon. He was quite the character, and he always wore overalls. Always. As long as I can remember. The only time he didn't have on overalls is if we were at a funeral. Uh, but, anyway... He always wore overalls, and one time I came over to visit with him, and Mama Holt wanted to show me something out on her flower bed because she had gorgeous flowers. I cannot get this off. She had gorgeous flowers. Anyway, um, I will say, y'all, that when you have a loosened, a loose head of cabbage, this is easier. All the cabbage that they had at the store I was at were quite tight. This was the loosest one they had. So anyway, where was I with Simon? Oh yeah, I went out and we were looking at something on her flower beds. And you know, when you're walking through the flower beds with, even though it was my grandmother-in-law, with David's grandmother, uh, I was walking out through her flower beds and she was showing me this and that. Well, we, we saw a weed or two and we thought we'll pull those while we're there. So we both were down on our knees pulling weeds out of her flower bed and that Simon walked out on the porch in his overalls and he was in a good mood that day. And he came out there and started singing to us. Uh, he was singing, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> so, and we just had the best time listening to him and we laughed and cut up and it was so fun. So if y'all got somebody like that in your life, be grateful. If you don't, you can enjoy my stories about Mama Holt and Simon. Anyway, they were some good people and I have good memories and good recipes from him. But that tickled me pink when he came out and started singing, You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog. <laughs> because I wasn't expecting it. All right, if you end up with a bad one that looks like this and it's got a little hole in it, y'all know what to do. You patch it up with another piece of this, okay? This is no big deal. All right, and I'm going to put me something in here to hold these together. And then, I better put two in this one. It's needy. <laughs> put it in here. Let it go. Okay, we've got the sauerkraut going in there. And let me skedaddle this out of the way. The next thing we've got to do is pour tomatoes over it. Let me, un let me turn that off. I don't need the boiling water anymore. Let me turn it off. Okay, and this right here, we'll use... I'll probably use it, chop it up and use it and cook it with some sausage later and have uh, sausage and cabbage because, you know, my husband really likes that. So I'm getting two meals out of that one cabbage, even though I wrestled with it, I'm gonna win in the end. <laughs> All right, here we go. The next thing we gotta do, let me just kind of skid skedaddle this out of the way. Hold on. And pull this over where you can see it. Okay, here I have got it in my crock pot. And the next thing we gotta do is add our tomatoes. Now y'all, I'm just using, I usually use a large can, but I don't have one today. So I'm using this as diced tomatoes and it is a four, uh, 14 ounce can. And then I feel like I need a few more tomatoes than that. So I have some that I use on special occasions that my mom and I put up from the garden. And here it is. So I'm just going to open this up and pour it out because they're really good. And y'all, this is so good. Let me get an opener here. Let's see if I can open it with my fingers. No, I cannot. Hold on. I should have had that out already, shouldn't I? Okay, there we go. Let me smell of them. Ooh, those smell good. This is gonna be the perfect topping to this. Now y'all, when you eat this and you open it up, it's all gonna be melded together then, and it's just gonna be delicious. And we usually serve it up with cornbread, but if you're doing keto, if you're doing low uh, carbs, then you know, you would eat it with not the cornbread. <laughs> but anyway, if you're not, you can get you some cornbread and this is gonna be delicious. So anyway, we're gonna let this cook on low for six hours or high for four hours. And then we'll, I'll take, I'll have it at the farm and I'll be feeding the guys in the hayfield. All right, y'all. 
Let's let this cook and I'll see you shortly. And how do you like my apron? Okay, y'all, I'm back and we have been cooking these on high in the crock pot for four hours, uh, maybe four and a half. And I also tempt them and I, I made sure the temperature was right for the meat to be done in the middle. These things are ready to taste. I'm gonna pull this off. I just turned that off. Look at that, look at that. Oh, it smells so good. Cabbage, sauerkraut, meat. Mmm, mmm, what's not to love? Well, anyway, I'm gonna pull a few out and show you what's what on these. Good old cabbage rolls. Ooh, baby, this one had two in it. Remember that one, it's so hot. This, and some wonderful cornbread is all you need. And if you're doing the low carb stuff, just don't eat the cornbread. And you're gonna want to plate it and pull out some of that really good sauerkraut. Let me get that one out of the way. All right, look how beautiful. And get as much sauerkraut as you like on yours. And here is beautiful cabbage rolls. And before you eat them, you're gonna wanna pull out those toothpicks but anyway, that's what they look like, and that's from Mama Holt. And remember, she cooked a lot and made a lot of food for a lot of people. And I pulled one out a little earlier <laughs> so it wouldn't be so hot when I tasted it. See this one? See how pretty that is? Gotta pull out that toothpick. Ta-da! And then we're gonna go in and cut it and see how it looks on the inside. I'm gonna just do one cut right down the middle real quick. Mm -mm. Let me pull that apart for you and show it to you. Y'all look at that. See that meat in the middle? Oh, yum. Meat in the middle. This is going to be so good. I can't wait to take this to bite. Now, it's still really hot, so what I'm going to do is cut me off a piece and get a little bit of everything. I'm going to get some of the sauerkraut and I'm going to get some of the meat and the tomatoes. And remember those tomatoes my mom and I put up? Whoop, I got a, that's a big old bite. Y'all think I can eat about that big? I bet I can. Look, I got a little bit of everything in it. What do y'all think? And it's cooling off a little bit. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. Mm -mm. That is so good, y'all. I'm gonna try not to eat the whole thing while we're here talking. <laughs> mm. The tomatoes, the sauerkraut, the cabbage, and the meat is just delicious. Mm. I can't wait for y'all to make this. I'm telling you, it's really good. It's a good bite. Maybe I'll just get one more bite. <laughs> I'll eat this one just for you. Get that tomato in there. Mm-mm. One good old bite. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really good. I'm so thankful I got to have Mama Holt live next to me for a while so she could give me her recipes. So these are Mama Holt's cabbage rolls and they're on page 61 of my book, Happiness is Homemade. Y'all go get you one. I gotta go feed some guys that are in the hay field. So I'm going to zip out of here, but before I do, I wanna tell you the good Lord loves you and I love you too. Y'all go have a really good afternoon and let me go feed our hungry farmers. All right, talk to you later, bye-bye.